Hello and welcome back to another Vector Twist tutorial. This week we're going to create isometric text with a cutout or slices. And we're going to set it up so you can change the font, the word, or even the slices and color anytime you like. It's a live effect without having to outline the text. Before we start, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when any of the new Vector Twist tutorials are live. And with that said, let's jump right into Illustrator. In your Adobe Illustrator document, create a background, preferably with the size of your artboard. I'm working with the color palette with a dark blue, an orange, and a darker pink. For my background, I'm going to choose a dark color, so grab the rectangle tool and create a rectangle on your artboard, filling with a dark color. After that, go back to the Layers panel and create a new layer. Double click it and call it Text. So we don't interfere with the background, just make sure to lock your layer with the background color. Next we're going to choose the type tool. So from the toolbar, choose the type tool and then create any text on your artboard. Which font you choose is up to you. I'm going to type the letter hello. From the character panel, I'm going to switch to Arial Black and then I'm going to increase the size, probably to 300 points. The size really depends what kind of artboard size you have. Just make sure that it's a bold font and you make it really big. My text color is black right now and I'm going to change this to a lighter color. My color choice is orange for the fill. Choose anything you like. Since I'm going to show you an effect where you don't have to outline the font, just leave the type as it is. We're going to cut it into pieces and then turn it into an isometric type. For the next step, make sure you lock your text. So keep it selected. Go to Object lock and then choose selection. The shortcut for this is command or control plus two. Then we're going to create rectangles, long thin ones, in order to cut up our text. Before we choose the rectangle tool, just switch the color so you can see your slices much better. What color, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose a green, so it really stands out for this example. Then grab the rectangle tool from the toolbar and on top of your text, start creating small, long rectangles. The size is really up to you. Then create copies underneath. How many you want, again, that is up to you. I'm using the shortcut to duplicate it. So I keep my shape selected, drag it to the bottom, and then press Ctrl or Command plus D on the keyboard to duplicate it. Depending on how many I want, maybe for the whole text or just for half of it, I keep pressing the same command. Then I'm going to align it with my text. Since I'm choosing a different color, I can see where things are going to be cut up. And then I need to unlock my text. So go back to Object and select Unlock All. Now your text is selectable again, and so are your slices that you've created. We need to select both of them. So select both of them by either pressing Command and Control plus A, or just simply drag a rectangle over the two objects. Then open up your Pathfinder panel and find the shape mode minus front. It's important that your slice pieces are in front of your text. Before you click it, also make sure that you press the Option or Alt key and hold it. So press it and hold and then click on minus front and watch what happens. We've clipped now our slices to our text. Our background color is showing through and now we can turn this particular text into isometric type. When I select my text, I can see that it's still editable. So I can change the text into any other word I like. Keep your text with the clipped slices selected, then go to Effect, 3D, and choose Extrude and Bevel. In the pop-up, change the position from Off Axis Front to Isometric Right, press the Preview button, and then OK. Now you can see that we've created an isometric type and the effect that we are getting on the artboard is as if our text is cut up into slices and stacked on top of each other. Again, this is a live text, you can change the word anytime. If I highlight my word and change it, for example, into word, you can see that it applies the same effect to it. And of course you can add more effects to this type. We can change the color from the stroke. Right now we don't have a stroke color, so I'm applying my pink stroke color. And this is giving a really nice effect to our text, or you can do anything else with it. You can also double click your text, and then you are inside the compound shape. And if you switch to outlines, 
you can still select your slices you've created, and then you can either shift them around or even rotate them. Then you exit it, and as you can see, it changes where your text gets cut up. I'm just going to undo this here and go back to your original text that I have. This is a really neat way to create a non-destructive object. We're using live text, we're using a live effect, and we even clip the shapes that we wanted to use as slices to our text, and we can alter them as well. This effect is really neat since you can change the color of your stroke, the fill, you can change the word, you can change the cutout part, you could make it from rectangles into circles, or anything that you can come up with. Just give it a try and play around with it. Since it's non-destructive, it's easy to change and you can create multiple different effects with these few tips that I just gave you. Let me show you what else you can do with it. So here I created the same text, I just chose the isometric top view, and instead of just stacking it, I cut the text up in pieces. So let me show you how I did this. So here's the same word hello, this time it's not in all caps, just regular. I have my orange fill on, no effects, and then I just created my slices for each letter singly instead of one shape all together. So let me paste them in front of my text. I gave them a different color so I can see where I'm going to apply it. This time I'm only going to apply it to the H, the L and the O. So again I'm going to select everything, go back to my pathfinder, hold and press the optional alt key and then select minus front. As you can see it clipped the shapes again to my text, my background shows through and it looks like my letters are sliced up. Then again I'm going to apply the 3D extrude and bevel effect and instead of choosing isometric left, I'm going to choose isometric top. So with the text selected, go back to effect, 3D extrude and bevel, choose for position, isometric top, click the preview, rotate the angle if you like to, and then press OK. As you can see, I have my isometric text sliced up with the orange fill color. Then via the appearance panel, I can add more effects. I have already done this, so I'm just going to turn them on. I created a purple stroke, just one point, and then I also added fill on top of my orange fill. I chose a gradient, and I chose for the opacity settings overlay. This gives a really nice blend of the orange to a lighter yellow, since it's on top of the fill that is orange. And then we can add even new effects to it. For example, we can add a drop shadow effect. Just make sure you are underneath the 3D extrude and bevel effect. Click the add new effect button, find stylize and then choose drop shadow. From the pop-up, make sure that the X offset and Y offset is small and then play around with the blur settings and the opacity settings. You can simply do this by clicking preview and then see if you like the effect that is added. And then press OK. Now if I deselect my text, what I have here on the artboard is another non-destructive text effect that I've added. I can still change the letters, I can even change if I wanted to my slices. And that's it. So if you like this video and appreciate what we do here at Vector Twist, let us know by hitting the like button, leave a comment, share it with your friends. Before you go, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell as well, so you'll never miss another Vector Twist tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.